Dear viewer, you're watching The Open Truth, one of our online platform program. South Sudan celebrates the World Environment Day. South Sudan is a member state of the United Nations. Belated because the day was supposed to be celebrated on the 5th of June. But this has been postponed to a later date, which is taking place today for reasons not known. But here we are today uh, to mark the day. That is the World Environment Day. I am right at the venue that is uh, the Freedom Hall, where the event is taking place. Right behind me are participants. You can see people dressed in uh, green t-shirts. This is a, a symbol of the day. Green is what people look for, and that is exactly the um, event taking place here. South Sudan is, as I just said, is a member state of the United Nations and it has all rights to celebrate this day but of course to see that it is a participant of protecting the world environment and you understand that south sudan is facing a wide range of uh, environmental problems from soil degradation due to the widespread deforestation to air pollution to actually water pollution and a lot of other factors that impact on our health. Dear viewer, you're watching The Open Truth. My name is Lasuba Memo and I'm the host. Today is the World Environment Day. Well, it is not an exact day, but South Sudan today celebrates the belated, belated World Environment Day. And uh, this day has been adjourned from the 5th of uh, June to the 17th for reasons that are not yet clear. But well, the government has taken up uh, and chosen this day particularly uh, to bring stakeholders together to discuss and actually visualize what the country needs to do in regards to, this, to the environment. I'm glad that you're watching this program, The Open Truth. Let's start this uh, session by speaking to the mayor of My friend. Cuba City, which is actually the capital of the Republic of South Sudan. You may be aware that South Sudan is faced with a range of challenges in regards to the environment. There is in soil degradation as a result of deforestation, and you have pollution, and a number of things that actually affect our environment. Let's be speaking to the mayor of Cuba City. What do you make of this day? It's good having you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the people of the Republic of South Sudan are actually commemorating World Environment Day under the theme Ecosystem Restoration for Sustainable Livelihoods. And this uh, occasion is actually organized by the Ministry of Forestry and Environment. And it is under the auspices of His Excellency General Salva Kir Mayardi, the President of the Republic. This day is uh, an important day all over the world because it is the day that people uh, commemorate uh, the, the impact of uh, human activities on environment. So when we talk of all these problems in the environment, they are caused by human beings. This is the result of human activities. Right. And South Sudan is just uh, one of these countries which are affected by the pollution, uh, by the climatic change. Uh, in South Sudan there is uh, deforestation due to uh, cutting of trees, due to making of charcoals. And this is uh, one is caused by the decades of war in South Sudan. Two, it is caused by difficult living conditions that also some people face, then they prefer to go so as to cut charcoals. And uh, we also have this random littering. Uh, and when there is rain, this uh, garbage uh, and plastics will actually get into the streams and to the river. This also is affecting not only human beings who drink from the river Nile, but it affects other living organisms such as uh, fish and uh, many other living organisms in the river. Uh, so this is very dangerous, of course, uh, to our lives and the lives of uh, animals. Once you have problem, once there is deforestation, this means we are going to have desert. And there are living organisms that survive in the, in the forest. And these animals will actually uh, be gotten rid of. They will die. 
because of these uh, activities of men in the forest, and this is causing us a problem. How do you view the ecosystem in uh, Juba? Uh, well, uh, we can say that uh, there is a massive improvement, uh, but of course we have a long way to go. We have to work hard uh, so as to improve the ecosystem in our national capital, Juba. Now, in one of the uh, programs is to plant more trees, yeah. and uh, in the plant of the government is to plant uh, a million trees. Yeah. Uh, has the state going to start this project? Well, we will have not less than 10 million trees to be planted all over Central Equatorial State. And this is in line with the plan and the strategy of the government of Central Equatorial State under the able leadership of our Governor Emmanuel Adil Anton. And it is also in accordance with the blueprint of uh, the government of Central Equatorial State that uh, we will plant these trees, not only in Juba. Juba alone may take not less than 1 million trees. But we're going to plant more than 10 million trees. And this one will definitely improve the ecosystem. We'll plant them and we'll protect them to grow. And in the level of Juba, this is my responsibility as the mayor of the city. And we will start planting these million trees from today. And the plantation will actually be launched by our able president, His Excellency General Salva Kirmayardi. So how are you going to implement it? What strategies do you have in place? Sure these trees are First of all, uh, in Juba City Council, we have the Department of Forestry, and uh, these are specialists of forestry. You know, forestry is a knowledge by itself. It is a department in the in the in the faculty of natural resources. So we have experts of forestry, and they will direct us according to 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 how it is done scientifically. And uh, we have them. They are already on uh, on ground, and they have already. I made assessment and even we are going practically to start as we talk now. After this interview we are going to start planting trees and they also have the, the there is a nest that they make to protect these trees from other animals that may survive on them and from human activities also. Because when we plant them and we don't protect them then, then they, they don't grow, then it is a waste of resources. Right. And what would be a call to members of the public as this uh, project picks up? Well, uh, my call to the members of the public is that this is a, a big and historical project that is going to be undertaken nationwide. Uh, let uh, the people cooperate with this government uh, of the day and let them also adopt this policy as their own. They need to own this policy because when we improve the ecosystem, it is for the benefit of, uh, of all uh, people in the Republic of South Sudan and those foreigners who will come and visit us will find Juba and all the cities and villages of South Sudan, just as good as the rest of the countries used to be. Uh, it is our responsibility as the people and the government all together, that is to say collective responsibility, to improve our environment. We should not be littering anyhow, we should not be putting our garbage uh, randomly, uh, we should make our city clean and uh, we need to see into it that we follow all the environmental uh, rules in our country. Mr. Ladu, the mayor of uh, Juba City, is my pleasure speaking to you. Thank you very much. You're watching The Open Truth with me, Masuga Memo. You just uh, listen to and even watch uh, the remarks by the mayor of Juba City, Mr. Ladu, speaking about the importance of uh, protecting the environment. Your Excellency, President of the Republic of South Sudan, General Salvakir Mayardit, Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic of South Sudan, Professor, Dr. Honorable James Waniga, the Chairman of the Economic Cluster, all my colleagues, the National Ministers present here today, the Deputy Ministers, the Government of Central Equatoria, headed by the Governor, Emmanuel Adel Anthony, the Governor of the State, Honorable Ambassadors present here today, UN Agency, Representatives and Development Partners, our ABLE organization, UNFAO, ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellency, allow me to recognize the following. 
for this day to be successful today, it was not the budget from the Minister of Environment, but it was from well wishes that contributed for this day to be the way it is today. I would like to thank the Office of the President for the contribution that they have given us so far for this day to succeed. Can you give a hand of clap? I would also like to give my thanks to the Office of the Vice President, Hussein Abdelbagi, who also contributed. I also like to thank the revenue, National Revenue Authority, who also gave their massive contribution. And now you can see the money of the national revenue has gone into the right, uh, into the right function. I would also like to thank the government of Central Equatorial State, especially the governor of Central Equatorial State, who is also my husband. I would also like to give a special thanks to the Food and Agriculture Organization of United Nations, that is FAO, FAO, for the contribution that they have done so far. You see the t-shirts and the other things that they have done for us. I'd also like to recognize in particular one of the youngest uh, businessmen uh, called uh, Akolai, uh, the owner of Trinity Energy, he also contributed. I think generally these are the people who contributed financially or in kind to make this day succeed. For the rest whom I did not call, I'm very sorry. Next time maybe you'll give us more than what these people have given. Uh, I also want in a special way I want to thank also the civil society and especially the youth organizations, those who have helped us in making this day be colorful. I think we have involved most of the youth to do the organization of this day. And I would like to appreciate them. And I want to ask the president if they can raise up where they are. Shabab kulu al sadina fi barnamik bitalela. Civil society kulu al istahal alila kedetum gum folk. Okay, I think the rest are outside. I think for this day to succeed, we involve most of our young people and your excellency. For us to succeed, we always need to put our young people first. As you can see the day, they have managed to make it to be colorful. Allow me to proceed with my speech now. Your Excellency, I'm delighted and honored to address you as we commemorate the World Environment Day 2021. The World Environment Day, as we all know, is an annual event celebrated on June 5th to encourage environmental action and protection. First held in 19. 74. And over the years, the World Environment Day has been widely celebrated in over 100 countries in the world. We in South Sudan were unable to commemorate this day on June 5th due to circumstances beyond our making. However, today we are celebrating the World Environment Day under the as species of His Excellency, the President of the Republic, General Salva Kiir Mayardit. The theme of this year's World Environment Day is ecosystem restoration. At the national level, we have also adopted the same theme, namely ecosystem restoration for sustainable livelihoods. I would like, therefore, like to say that we, in the Ministry of Environment and Forestry are really honored and privileged to have His Excellency, 
the President of the Republic officiating this year's World Environment Day celebration. Furthermore, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate His Excellency, the President of the Republic, for his wise leadership, for the progress being made in implementing the revitalized peace agreement so that peace and stability prevails in our beloved country. As a country, we are committed to the objectives of the World Environment Day. This day is actually about sensitizing people on the importance of environment and to recognize the need to prevent, stop, and reverse environmental degradation of our heart's vital ecosystem. To mark this day, we want to honor the various resources users more especially the farmers who are working hard to heal and restore their local ecosystems that are degraded. It is thus encouraging to know that ecosystems can recover from destructions. Before going further, an ecosystem may be defined as a community or a group of living organisms that live in and interact with each other in a given or a specific environment. For instance, tropical forests are ecosystems made up of living beings such as trees, plants, animals, insects, and microorganisms that are in consistent interaction between themselves and that are affected by other physical or chemical components such as the sun, temperature, oxygen, and nutrients, etc., or to mention a few. Every factor in an ecosystem depends on every other factor, either directly or indirectly. For instance, a change in the temperature of an ecosystem will often affect what types of plants will grow here. Furthermore, Animals that depend on plants for food and shelter will have to adapt to the changes either by moving to another ecosystem or they perish. Nevertheless, it is worth recalling that for thousands of years, people have interacted with ecosystems and many cultures have developed around numerous nearby ecosystems. Your Excellency, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to underline the importance of preserving our protecting and protecting the ecosystem. Like all other living organisms, human beings are dependent on natural ecosystems, services and goods for their livelihoods. We need the ecosystem to get the food we eat, the water we drink, the air we breathe, and to transform raw materials into our everyday consumable products and goods. So in order to keep and improve our living conditions, it is essentially important that we preserve the natural ecosystem. For example, agriculture that provides our food depends on the characteristics of specific ecosystem. Cereals or vegetables grow only under certain conditions of temperature and humidity. They also need certain natural processes, such as pollination, to take place. If we change these characteristics too intensely, there is the risk that we will not be able to produce what we produce today, or at least not in the same way. That is, why, that is why there are some agricultural techniques that are used to manage food production, such as agroforestry, permaculture, or regenerative agriculture. Ecosystems generate numerous benefits or ecosystem services. Marine or river ecosystems provided, provide fresh air. Recreation, power, and food supply. Coastal wetlands help mitigate against flooding, filter waste, 
and serve as nurseries for fisheries. Forest ecosystems provide us with a wide variety as ecosystem services, including provisioning, regulating, cultural, and supportive services. These ecosystem services not only deliver the basic material needs, but survival, but also underline other aspects of well-being, including health, security, good social relation, relations, and freedom of choice. As conditions become hotter, rainfall more, rainfall more unpredictable, and extreme weather events were spread wide, widespread due to global warming and climate change. Tree planting is more important than ever in mitigating these impacts. This has promoted the government through the Ministry of Environment to initiate an ambitious tree planting project that aims at planting 100 million trees across the whole of South Sudan. This project will actually help mitigate the effects of climate change and restore degraded land-based ecosystems to make them more productive and to be able to provide sustainable livelihoods to our rural communities. Therefore, we are appealing to our people across South Sudan and stakeholders to plant trees, clean up surroundings, and take actions against the harmful effects of environmental degradation. I would also like to urge our local communities who depend entirely on natural resources for their livelihoods to use them sustainably to meet the needs of both the present and future generations. I am very much delighted to see the active participation of the youth and the school peoples, which reminds me that they are the future of this great nation. We all have a role to play in protecting and caring for our environment, not just to preserve what we have today, but also for sustaining it for our succeeding generations. Caring for our environment is not just the duty of the government alone. It requires a collective effort, and more importantly, to change in our life, lifestyles, habits, and attitudes. Your Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, at this year's World Environment Day celebrations, the following documents will be launched by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of South Sudan, Salva Kir Mayardit, as products of the enabling activities related to the Rio conventions that were acceded to, to by the country. This government initiates, this government initiative and efforts aim to address crucial environmental issues such as climate change and biodiversity degradation. The documents are as follows. The initial national communication to the United Nations framework, conventions for climate change. The national biodiversity strategy and action plan under the Convention on Biological Diversity. National capacity self-assessment report and action plan for Rio conventions. During this event, we shall also launch the decade of ecosystem restoration in the country, which will kick start with the declaration of the planting of 100 million trees across South Sudan in a period of 10 years. Before I conclude my remarks, uh, I would also like to, to thank the Minister of uh, General Education, Sore, for not recognizing the minister. Your Excellency, the, the people you see in this hall, most of them are the pupils and the students. And I would like to give thanks to the minister and the Minister of General Education for allowing these children to come and join us today.
Thank you, Honorable Minister. We would have given you a chance to talk, but because of time. But thank you for allowing the kids to come. I would like to thank all those who supported us, as I mentioned before, and the Minister of uh, General Education is one of them, the UNFAO, who have given us this big project of 100 million trees. We would like to appreciate you for always standing with the Republic of South Sudan through different institutions. And I'm sure Minister of Environment is one of them, Agriculture and Food Security, Livestock, Wildlife, Water, and maybe other line ministries. I also express gratitude again to the youth and civil society organizations who who spared no efforts in ensuring that this celebration is successful. I will also not forget the staff of my ministry, the Minister of Environment and Forestry, from both the Department of Environment and the Department of Forestry. Your Excellency, for your information, uh, we have two big uh, departments. We have Department of Environment, headed by Under Secretary Africano, who was the MC. And then we also have Department of uh, Forestry, headed by Jaden Tongun. I think he's seated somewhere there. So the ministry is blessed to have two undersecretaries. I would like to commend the team spirit exhibited during the preparation for this event. Up to this, it's, it's peak day to day. And before my final words, Your Excellency, I would also like to say something more especially on our forest. And I'm very glad the governor mentioned about this. Your Excellency, our forests are finishing and we have so many challenges. The challenges that we are having as a ministry is about the insecurity. When you go to this forest, most of the people doing the destruction and cutting the trees are the people with the harm. These are the people with the guns and they are involved in the destruction of the forest. If you can also see all the groups which normally rebels in the Republic of South Sudan, they use the forest product for the income generating, for sustaining the rebellions. So most of these uh, forest reserves that we have for the Republic of especially our own forest reserve, is being occupied by most of these rebels in the bush. So it has made us difficult, the ministry, to go there. And people don't expect us to go where there is a lot of insecurity. And it is our own people holding guns are the ones contributing to the destruction of the forest. Secondly, Your Excellency, we all know that in the Republic of South Sudan, the only source of energy or the only source of cooking uh, is firewood. And most of our people depend on the forest. But also, we have a, a policy that when you cut, you plant. But it has never been a case even from our community. People go there and cut but they don't plant. It is a major, it's a major challenge to us as a ministry. Your Excellency, Minister of Environment is not taken very serious into consideration because I believe environment is life and it is something that leads to, uh, with the lives of people as well as the surroundings. So the environment uh, budget, the ministry is not catered for. It is one of the least paid ministry and since the Minister of Finance is here, I think the Minister of Finance has to do something. Your Excellency, Minister of uh, Environment, particularly the forestry sector, it is one of the sectors that generates the income to the country. But we also have some difficulties in managing our forest reserve because of lack of financing from the Minister of Finance. Your Excellency, I would also like to say something on the, on the, on the pollution in the oil field. You might have heard uh, there is a lot of uh, strikes in the oil field, more especially when it comes to pollution. Uh, and the victims of the pollution in the oil field are actually women and children. Most of us might have heard the women are giving birth to children which are deformed, without eyes, and even people are losing lives, especially in those producing areas. Our oil companies, I think, were given the, the mandate by the EPSA, 
that is the agreement that was done long time ago during the Sudan. And it has given them um, all the mandates to do the auditing, to do everything the way they want. And sometimes I wonder, how can you pollute the environment at the same time want to correct it? Or how can you be in the field, you become the river, and at the same time you are a footballer? This one cannot happen. But Your Excellency, we are trying our level best with the current Minister of uh, Petroleum. We have made a joint venture where we are doing the auditing of the oil the companies so that we see exactly where they have gone wrong. But there is a bit of resistance from the oil companies. Of course, they also communicate direct to their bosses outside South Sudan. This one is also another major problem. Your Excellency, as we get money, we should not also get money in the expense of the lives of our people. This is very important because these people are not adhering uh, to the environmental aspects, especially in the oil field. Finally, to enhance ecosystem restoration, we must strive to create sustainable ways of living, working and development while at the same time protecting, restoring, and creating new ecosystems for future generations. This can only happen when we embark on modern innovations like regenerative agriculture, climate smart farming practices, and reforestation and afforestation efforts, which are at the core of ecosystem restoration in the rural areas of South Sudan. Thank you. Your Excellency. Uh, Your Excellency, Dr. James Waniga, Vice President of the Republic, Honorable Minister of Environment and Forestry, Honorable Ministers, Governor of Central Equatoria State, members of the diplomatic corps, representatives of food and agricultural organization. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to all of you. I'm pleased to be with you today to mark the World Environment, Environment Day. This day is often celebrated on June the 5th every year, but we are marking it today due to our, to our reasons to, to due to be reasons beyond our making. This day enables us to raise awareness about environmental issues and to encourage ourselves to take care of our surrounding environment. The theme of this year's celebration is ecosystem restoration and we added sustainable livelihood to our national theme to reflect our priorities. So our national theme for this year is ecosystem restoration for sustainable livelihood. We added sustainable livelihood because South Sudan is a country seeking to restore its land-based ecosystem. 
we are equally seeking to conserve our rich bio by diversity as the way of safeguarding our future. Our laws entitled every citizen in South Sudan to, to, to a right to a clean and healthy environment. As a government, we are duty bound to uphold that I can sadly admit that our environment is degrading at a rapid rate. This environmental degradation comes partly from human activities, such as charcoal burning, other contributing factors include disregard from the public about proper waste disposal methods. For those of you who had the chance to sit along River Nile, you would have seen massive plastic bottles floating in the river. These plastic bottles waste poses a serious harm to River Nile ecosystem, especially upstream, including the short much land. To protect the Nile as the source of our livelihood, I am calling upon the Ministry of Environment and Forestry to work in collaboration with the city of Juba to address this issue. Please use all the administrative tools at your disposal to address this issue of plastic bottles and other waste in the Nile once and for all. Given the importance of environmental protection, I would also like to urge our partners, UN agencies, NGOs, and civil society organizations to join hands with us in tackling the dangers of plastic pollution and other environmental challenges. To those in attendance today, I thank you for joining us. At this special event. And finally, I would like to end my remarks by appealing to general public to per preserve and protect the environment by adhering to proper waste disposal. Thank you all and may God bless all of you. Dear viewer, you're watching The Open Truth. My name is Lasuba Memo, uh, the program host, and we're bringing to you the conclusion of uh, the World Environment Day that South Sudan belatedly celebrate 
uh, the Freedom Hall uh, in Juba. As you know, the World Environment Day is celebrated annually on the 5th of June. But today, South Sudan decided to delay it for reasons they say it is beyond their making. And now, during the celebration, a lot of his speeches were delivered. And during the, the commemoration, of course, invited guests uh, turn up. You have uh, government officials and you have members of the Di Diplomatic Corps. And the event was graced by President Salfa Kir. Did you know, do you know what the president said? That our forests are finishing. And this is his admission he has made uh, during the occasion. And he has called for serious actions by the Ministry of Environment and Forestry to ensure that the country protects its natural resources, particularly the forest, which he says is really causing a lot of uh, degradation. It is causing a lot of harm on the environment. And this is something that needs to be done. He has given a go-ahead to the Ministry to ensure that his steps are taken, including ensuring that his proper disposal of waste particularly on the riverside. He thinks that the country uh, is not doing well in terms of managing the environment. Other speakers uh, during the occasion were the Ministry of Environment and Forestry, and also we had a speech from uh, a representative from uh, FAO who cited Rwanda and Kenya as some of the best African nations that are really up to the game, keeping a good care of the environment. And they are making millions of dollars from this, something Malau says that South Sudan needs to emulate if they should benefit from the same. Keep watching. I am Lasuba Memo, the host of The Open Truth, ITV.